Okay, so for our next thing, I brought our scene back to just be just a basic toon shader with some like, contour edges applied to it. And then I have adjusted the angle threshold to bring in like all those nice contour edges and stuff. So the next thing I want to show you guys is using like uh, shadow mats and the utility shaders and stuff like that to really start to customize our toon shader. So to start out that, let's go and actually like cl close all these. And let's go into our base and let's drop our base down to zero. So we get rid of all our lighting information here. And then what we'll want to do next, let's go and grab a shadow mat and drag that into our scene. And what we can do actually with all these nodes and stuff is you can plug them into like the material output here. And it'll like sort of override your scene with just the chain that you have selected so you can really isolate the things you want and sort of refine these to get the look you want for them. So by default, everything will be completely black. So we'll have to change some things to get everything to show up properly. In our background drop down, let's change it to background color. And you can see now we're starting to get our cast shadows, but we're not getting sort of the self shadows on our objects. So there's one more thing we have to do for those. Let's go to our diffuse channel and let's increase our backlighting up just one notch. For some reason you have to do that, I'm not sure why, but you can see now we're starting to immediately get our self-lit shadows back into our scene. One thing to note is um, it's uh, so clamped that the very fine stepping on like your objects, you can start to see the stepping for those. So to uh, smooth that out, what we can do, let's grab our sphere, right click it, go to the Cinema 4D tags, and grab an Arnold parameter tag. And in here, what we can do is go to our subdivision tab and change our type to Cat Clark. And you can see now it'll start to like refine that edge because it's subdividing a, a little bit more. And you can start to increase that to sort of clean up that edge if you want it, if you're having troubles with like a certain object. So now we're getting like a nice clean edge along our sphere. But for the sake of this demo, I'm not too worried about that. So I'll just keep it at one frame now, just to clean up a bit, but to have the performance that I need to uh, show you guys the tutorial. And then that's all we really need from here to create our our little shadow mat. And what we could do with this now is we can use this as a mask to create unique colors and stuff for our shadows, as well as being able to use the shadow mat to actually apply contour edges to our uh, cast shadows and everything. So now that we have our shadow mat set up, let's plug our tune shader back into our material output. And so to connect this into our tune shader, let's use a, a ramp node and drag that into our scene. And let's plug this into the input of that. So by default, Let's actually plug this into our emission color. And by default, nothing will have changed just because it's taking this black and white information from our shadow mat and changing that into black and white information. So to customize that, let's grab our white node here and let's make like a nice uh, sort of highlight color or whatever. And now let's take our black node and we can change that and you can see now we're starting to be able to have the ability to really customize our shadows for our scene and to be able to like make them their own unique color and everything. 
So this combined with like your tone mapping and everything, you can start to really create some unique shaders and stuff. So the next thing we can do with the shadow mat is we can use it to outline our, uh, our shadow edges. So to do that, let's actually just drag and drop our output into our edge detection mask color. And you see once it refines, now we're starting to get those edges along our, our shadows. And I find this can like create some really cool looks and effects. And um, I wish I had known that at the time for making this. And you can see how I have like the shadowed edges sort of outlined. I, at first I'd had actually done that in post and Photoshop using um, a shadow pass to create that outline. So using like the stroke filter but I had recently found to uh, to create those with this, which is just like having them in your scene and ready to go is just so much faster for production wise. Okay, so say you wanna mix your shadow mat with your gribbly texture and have them both show up in your edge detection. So to do that, let's type in mix and let's grab our mix RGBA node and let's plug those into input 1 and plug this one into input 2 and then let's plug our mix node into our main edge and our mask color and you see now we're getting our shadowed edge as well as all our edge detection from our Gribbly texture. Right now all the edges are pretty harsh so what we can do is go into our width scale and bring that down a little bit just so they're not so thick. There we go. Sweet. So now we're getting a combination of both the shadowed edges as well as our texture edges. So next, let's look at bringing in our C4D noise and blending it into our material. So you can type in C4D into your search field and let's drag in our noise node. Let's use it to replace our mat, our shadow mat. And you see it by default, it's just like the default noise. Let's change it to something a little bit more unique. And what I like to use the C4D noise is sort of like clamping it down and using that as a mask to create sort of like little bits of grime in your scene. And you can see here how that uh, takes effect. Like so this little grimy areas are created using uh, a very contrasted C4D noise and then we use that as a mask to mask in just a little bit of like a darker color or whatever you want to use it for and we blend that into our emission node and you can see how it's sort of starting to create like a little grimy field and then uh, what I also did in this scene is grabbed another C4D noise I think using like the Poxo one or something but I made it at a super small scale and you can see how it's creating like these little tiny like specks and that just helps create some like little bit more of wear and tear feel to your scene. So to do that, uh, I changed mine to blistered turbulence. We'll see if this one gets us where to where we want. And you see when you clamp it down you can start to get those hard edges. Let's start to increase our low clip. And you can see now we're starting to get like these little like grimy islands and stuff in your scene. Uh, right now they're a little bit too, there's a little bit too much. So what we can do, let's increase our global scale. I just up mine by a thousand. We can always 
refine that and stuff later on. And right now, our islands are starting to look a little bit too smooth, and I want it to be a little bit more, a little bit more variance in the line. So what we can do is go to our octaves, and let's double that for now. And you can see now we're starting to get a little bit more variation in our uh, turbulence. Uh, let's adjust our low clip a bit here. There you go, now we're starting to get bring in a little bit more into our scene. So now let's use this as a mask and be able to use that to blend in with our main colors. So let's actually bring our shadow mat and plug it back into there so we're left with our sort of default scene that we have going on. And let's blend in our C4D noise into our main colors using a multiply node. Let's plug this into input one, and let's plug our colors into input two, and then let's plug this into our color emission channel. And by default, it'll just be like, it's overlaying the black on top of everything. So we want to clamp this down to be like light grays and stuff. We can change it in here as well, but I find that I just like to connect a ramp node in between. It, I find it's just easier to adjust your properties faster rather than going into here and then like selecting these and then yeah it's just I just find it's way easier to use a ramp node because then you if you depending on your contrast for it you can adjust them you have a little bit more flexibility with your shader this way so let's grab our black node here and let's start to bring that way up. So right now we're getting lighter spots and a darker main area. So what we can do is right click our ramp here and invert gradient. They'll swap all the points on the gradient and you can see now we're starting to get our sort of like grease stains on our uh, shader. One thing to note that the noise, our C4D noise, is applied uh, on UV based. So right now I have my shader set to cubic, so it's just um, evenly distributing it along all my surfaces in uh, a cubic fashion. So next, let's actually use this to outline our gram as well. So that works the same way as how we did our shadow mat is we can just plug this into our edge detection mask color and you can see now we're getting our edge detection on, on all our little grimy bits here so what we can do now let's blend these two actually together using the mix node that we used before let's remove that guy and replace it with our c4d noise and now let's plug this into our mask color. And you'll see now we'll start to get our edge detection on both our shadows and our little grammy bits. So next, let's start to introduce those little tiny speckly sort of just like wear and tear feel to our material. So for that, let's uh, let's drag in a new C4D noise just so it's nice and default. And let's change that to, let's change it to Poxo for now. And let's actually, let's, sometimes these actually shrink. Let's grab our output and let's isolate this into our scene just so we're getting and over a feel of how it's affecting your scene. Let's clamp the contrast on that. And you can see now we're starting to get like little grimy spots. Well, you could, if you want those to be even smaller, let's go to our global scale. 
And let's reduce that by 10 times for now. Let's see how that's starting to look. So this is looking about like the size I want for them, but the distribution is very even across our scene. So what we can do now is actually use another C4D noise to mask out where we want these to show up on our material. So let's uh, let's actually grab our our Grammy noise our Grammy C4D noise that we created earlier. And let's copy paste that just because we know that's a good starting point. And let's blend those together with a multiply. So let's plug that into input one. And let's plug this into input two, and then let's plug our multiply node into our material output here. And you can see now we're starting to get little grimy areas across our scene. But we don't really want those things to be just isolated to our sort of like our grimy spots. So what we can do now is let's take our C4D sort of like island noise and let's change the seed on those a little bit. And you can see that just randomly distrib randomly distributes the uh, blistered turbulence noise on your scene and it cha sort of changes the sort of the algorithm for it based on the seed. So right now I think my islands are a little bit too big. So let's drop this back down to like 200% and see how that feels. There, now we're starting to get both the island size I want to have, but some of them are a little bit too big. So what we can do is let's grab our low clip plane and let's start to bring that back up a little bit. Just so we're getting like little hits of the griminess here and there. So next, now that we have our, uh, our gross sort of griminess set up, Let's connect that into our tune shader. So for the most part, I just like using the edge detection part to like plug this into. So let's do that. So let's actually grab another mix node and let's plug this into there and plug this into there to input one and two. And then let's plug this into our edge detection. And you can see now we're starting to get those speckly, that speckly noise on our scene. And it starts to just give it a more of a natural, like grimy lived in feel, depending on like the sort of the scene you're doing. But yeah, I like the way it sort of like feels when it's like in your scene like that. 